Sutra. If virtuous minds are as straight as lotus strings, true and real in everything they do, then they can enter samadhi and never be involved in the deeds of demons. I certify that such people will accomplish the Bodhisattvas unsurpassed knowledge and enlightenment. Commentary. If vicious and lay pupils' minds are as straight as lute strings, true and real in everything they do, then they can enter samadhi and never be involved in the deeds of demons. One's mind should be straight like a lute string, not curved and crooked, like the body of the lute. One should be truthful in all matters and never lie. Lying is a case of being off by a hair in the beginning, one will be off by a thousand miles in the end. If you tell one lie now, it sets back your accomplishment of Buddhahood by several million great ends. Take a look, take a good look and see who's taking the loss. If one can be straight and truthful, one can enter somebody and no demonic obstacles will ever arise. I certify that such people will accomplish the Bodhisattvas unsurpassed knowledge and enlightenment. Anyone who has a mind as straight and true as a loose string can become a Bodhisattva. They can accomplish the unsurpassed wisdom and enlightenment of a Bodhisattva. Sutra, what I have said here is the Buddha's teaching. Any explanation counter to it is the teaching of Babiyan. Commentary. What I have said here is the Buddha's teaching. If you explain as I have explained here, it will be the doctrine spoken by the Buddhas. Any explanation counter to it is the teaching of Babiyan. Anyone who does not express this doctrine but pronounces theories that oppose it is just a demon king talking. Babiyan refers to the demon king. Answerable Instruction on Purity, Volume 6, Chapter 1, Sutra Ananda, you asked about collecting one's thoughts. I have now begun to explain the wonderful method of cultivation for entrance into Samadhi. Those who seek the Bodhisattva way must first be as pure as the glistening frost in keeping these four rooms of deportment. If one is able to never give rise to anything superfluous, then the three evils of the mind and the four of the mouth will have no cause to come forth. Commentary Ananda, you asked about collecting one's thoughts. I have now begun to explain the wonderful method of cultivation for entrance into Samadhi. The wonderful method is the perfect penetration of the organ of the ear, the returning of the hearing to hear the self-nature so that one's nature accomplishes the unsurpassed way. Those who seek the Bodhisattva way must first be as pure as glistening frost in keeping these four rooms of department. The first thing you must do is cultivate these four rooms of department, not taking life, not stealing, not committing acts of sexual misconduct and not lying. This prohibition against sexual misconduct refers not only to lust with the body, but to lust within the mind. You must get rid of both in order to, to transcend the wearisome dust. If you don't get rid of your thoughts of lust, you cannot get out of the dust. The same goes for killing, stealing, and lying. These four rooms of department are extremely important. You should become as glistening white as frost. You should be completely white, without the least bit of defilement, with not one black fleck in the white. If one can be like that, then quite naturally, one is able to never give rise to anything superfluous. Spontaneously, you will attain the source, then the three evils of the mind and the four of the mouth will have no cause to come forth. The greed, hatred, and stupidity born of the mind will cease to arise, and the four mistakes of the mouth, loose speech, harsh speech, lies, and gossip will not arise. There will be no causes and conditions to allow them to arise because you hold the precepts and truly cultivate the four clear and 
an unanswerable instructions on purity. Sutra Ananda, if one does not neglect these four matters and further if one does not pursue forms, fragrances, tastes and or objects of touch, then how can any demonic deeds arise? Commentary Ananda, if one does not neglect these four matters and one does not lose sight of or forget about these four clear and fixed instructions on purity, regarding killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, and further, if one does not pursue forms, fragrances, tastes, or objects of touch, then how can any demonic deeds arise? If you don't get caught up in the defiling states of forms, sounds, smells, and objects of touch, if you don't climb on these conditions, then demonic deeds will spontaneously disappear. Once they are gone, they cannot arise. Sutra, if there are people who cannot put an end to their habits from the past, you should teach them to single-mindedly recite my light atop the Buddha summit and surpass the spiritual mantra Mohe Satan Tua La. Commentary, if there are living beings who cannot get rid of their bad habits from past lives, you should teach them to recite single-mindedly. The important point here is to be single-minded. Don't have a divided mind such that on the one hand you recite the mantra, but on the other, on the other you doubt its function. You don't want to be reciting and thinking. Namo, namo, namo what? You recite the mantra on the one hand and on the other. You don't really want to be saying namo at the same time that you are saying it. That's just a case of being caught between belief and doubt. You're basically one person, but you end up with two minds. One mind thinks that perhaps there is some usefulness to the recitation, while the other mind says, what I'm doing reciting things that I don't even understand. That kind of division is to be feared. You must recite single-mindedly. Mokhe means great. Satan Tuapurtala refers to the great white canopy. When you recite Santan Tuapurtala, a great white canopy manifests in the emptiness where you are. The size of the canopy depends on the amount of your skill. If your skill is great and lofty, then when you recite this phrase of the canopy, there will be no disasters for thousands of miles around. If your skill is small, then the canopy will cover your own head and protect you alone. If one has virtue in the way, if one is a great and virtuous high Shang Han, then when one recites this light of mantra, the entire country can benefit from it. The entire realm will be free from calamities. Great disasters will turn into small ones, and small disasters won't even happen. Now, we are having the Suragama Lecture Dharma Assembly and a lot of people are cultivating the secret Dharma of the Buddha. So I believe that all of America is benefiting from it. Americans may not be aware of it, but we are saving their lives. It is all done invisibly. And they never have any idea of who has saved them or even that they have been saved. Nor do we wish them to know. This is a case of there being no giver and no receiver. The three-wheeled substance of the giver, the gift, and the receiver is empty. When we save people, it is not necessary to get them to thank us. This is where the wonder lies. Sutra, it is the invisible appearance atop the summit of the first come one. It is the spiritual mantra proclaimed by the Buddha of the unconditioned mind who comes forth from the summit in a blaze of light and sits upon a jeweled lotus flower. Commentary The Suragama Mantra is the invisible appearance atop the summit of the first come one. It cannot be seen by people's ordinary physical eyes. As the sutra later describes it, at that time, a hundred billion rays sprang from the mount of the flesh on the ground of the world honored one's head. A thousand petaled precious lotus arose 
from a mist those rays. Upon the precious flower sat the first common's transformation. From the crown of his head, in turn, he emitted ten beams, each composed of a hundred rays of precious light. Every one of those glowing rays shone on lens, as many as the sands of ten Ganges rivers. While throughout empty space there were various secret traces, spirits, each holding aloft a mountain and wielding a pestle. The great assembly, gazing upward, felt fearful admiration and sought the Buddha's kind protection. Single mindedly, they listened as the first come one in the light of the invisible appearance on the crown of the Buddha's head proclaimed the spiritual mantra. I know this passage by heart. I never forget it. It is the Buddha of the unconditioned mind who comes forth from the summit in a blaze of light and sits upon a jeweled lotus flower and proclaims the spiritual mantra. People who are able to encounter this spiritual mantra have great good fruits from the past. Otherwise, even if they encountered it, they could not learn it. They would never be able to memorize it. That's why I'm testing you on the Suragama Mantra to have already passed the test. The rest of you had better get busy. Sutra, what is more, your past lives with Mantanji's daughter created, created accumulated compass of causes and conditions. Your habits of fondness and emotional love go back not just one life, nor even just one compa, yet as soon as I proclaimed it, she was freed forever from the love in her heart and accomplished a hardship. Commentary What is more, your past lives with Mantanji's daughter created accumulated compass of causes and conditions. Your affinities go way back. You were married to each other 500 times. Your habits of fondness and emotional love go back not just one life, nor even just one compa. You two have very deep habits of mutual regard and fondness of each other. It does not pertain to just one time, not to one life, or not even to just one compa. It's been going on for a long, long time. Yet, as soon as I proclaimed it, she was freed forever from the love in her heart. Mantanji's daughter renounced her emotional love and she accomplished a hardship. After she heard the mantra and returned to receive the Buddha's instruction, she became enlightened and was certified to the third fruition of a hardship. When Manjushri spoke about perfect penetration, she was certified to the fourth fruition of a hardship. Her accomplishment of the fourth fruition was very quick. Ananda is still at the first fruition at this point. He hasn't made any progress. Sutra, that prostitute who had no intention of cultivating, was imperceptibly aided by that spiritual power and was swiftly certified to the position beyond learning. Then, what about you, South heroes in the assembly, who seek the most supreme vehicle and are resolved to accomplish Buddhahood? For you, it should be as easy as tossing dust into a favorable wind. What then is the problem? Commentary That prostitute who had no intention of cultivating was imperceptibly aided by that spiritual power and was swiftly certified to the position beyond learning. Mountain's daughter was a prostitute. She basically wasn't interested in cultivating the way. Nonetheless, the power of the spiritual mantra aided her in a secret way and she attained the fourth fruition of a hardship very quickly. Then what about you, South Yoras in the assembly, who seek the most supreme vehicle and are resolved to accomplish Buddhahood? You, South Yoras in this Dharma assembly, are in search of the Buddha vehicle and will certainly become Buddhas. For you, it should be as easy as tossing dust into a favorable wind. What then is the problem? Once a good wind takes the dust, the dust will blow away. What's the difficulty? What's the danger? 
there isn't any. Sutra, those in the final age who wish to sit in a um, bodhimanda must first hold the pure precepts of a bhikshu. To do so, they must find as their teacher a foremost shramana who is pure in the precepts. If they do not encounter a member of the sangha who is truly pure, then it is absolutely certain that their department in precepts and rules cannot be accomplished. Commentary Those in the final age who wish to sit in a bodhimanda must first hold the pure precepts of a bhikshu. The first thing that people in the Dharma ending age have to do with they if they wish to set up bodhimandas, perhaps temples and stupas or way places of other sorts, is to receive the bhikshu precepts and then uphold them purely. Anyone who wants to live the home life must take the precepts in order to do so. Once one has received the precepts, one is a bhikshu. Then one must strictly uphold the precepts and rules. There must not be the slightest violation. To do so, they must find as their teacher a foremost shramana who is pure in the precepts. They look for a nationally respected shramana, a high shanghan. They take him as their teacher. If they do not encounter a member of the Sangha who is truly pure, then it is absolutely certain that their department in precepts and rules cannot be accomplished. If you don't find a member of the Sangha who holds the precepts purely, then your own department will regard to the precepts and rules cannot be brought to fulfillment. You won't be successful in it. Sutra, after accomplishing the precepts, they should put on fresh, clean clothes, light incense, in a place where they are alone, and recite the spiritual mantra spoken by the Buddha of the mind 108 times. After that, they should secure the boundaries and establish the Bodhimanda. Commentary, after successfully accomplishing the precepts, they should put on fresh, clean clothes. New clothes are best or clean ones that have not been worn. They should light incense in the place where they are alone. You should light incense before the Buddhas and not do anything else but recite the spiritual mantra spoken by the Buddha of the mind 108 times. The Buddha of the mind refers to the transformation Buddha atop the invisible summit. This is the mantra spoken by the Buddha of the mind. The spirit of mantra, the spiritual mantra refers to the heart of the mantra. Recite this section of the Suraga Mantra 108 times. After that, they should secure the boundaries and establish the Buddhimanda. One secures the boundaries to the east as far as they stand, to the west as far as they stand, to the south as far as they stand, and to the north as far as they stand. Once the boundaries are secured, the heavenly demons and the adherents of external ways are not permitted to enter the enclosed area. Thus, the bodhimanda and platform will not be blocked by demonic deeds. In this way, the platform, the bodhimanda, is established. Sutra, in the countries within them, they should seek for the unsurpassed first common throughout the ten directions to emit a light of great compassion and annoy the crowds of their heads. Commentary As they recite 108 times and establish the Buddha Manda, in the countries within them, they should seek for the unsurpassed first commons throughout the ten directions, that is, in the Buddha lands found within the boundaries, to emit a light of great compassion and annoy the crowds of their heads. They should beseech all the Buddhas in the lands of the ten divisions contained within the boundaries they have secured to emit a great compassionate light to moisten and nourish them on the crowds of their heads. Sutra Ananda, when any such pure visuals, visionaries, or white robed donors in the Dharma ending age who can read their minds of greed and lust, hold the Buddha's pure precepts and in the Buddhimanda, 
make the vows of a bodhisattva and can bath upon entering each time and day and night for three weeks without sleep continue this practice of the way. I will appear before these people in a physical form and rub the crowns of their hands to comfort them and enable the enable them to become enlightened. Commentary Ananda when any such pure bishops, bishonis or white robed donors in the Dharma ending age, at that time there may be pure bishops or bishonis or lay pupil. Donor is the Dana party in Sanskrit. The Chinese transliteration divides into a word that means giving and the word to transcend. It refers to those people who protect the triple jewel. If such people can read their minds of greed and lust, that is, get rid of sexual desire, hold the Buddha's pure precepts, and in a bodhimanda make the vows of a bodhisattva. 1. Living beings are boundless, I vow to save them. 2. Afflictions are endless, I vow to cut them off. 3. Dharma doors are limitless, I vow to study them completely. 4. The Buddha way is unsurpassed, I vow to accomplish it. These are the four vast vows of a Bodhisattva. If this pupil can bath upon entering each time and day and night for three weeks without sleep, continue this practice of the way. They make the Bodhisattva's vows in the Bodhimanda and then they recite the spiritual mantra, the Suragama mantra. If they go out, they bath before they return. Throughout the six periods of the day and night, they practiced for three weeks, sitting for three hour stretches and walking for three hour stretches. During these 21 days and nights, they do not sleep. I will appear before these people in a physical form and rub the crowns of their hands to comfort them and enable them to become enlightened. Shakyamuni Buddha says, I will appear in person before such people and rub the tops of their hands with my hand. I will enable them to obtain the fruition of sagehood.